The Sesh Podcast, episode 167, take one. Hello, Average Joes and Hoes with Bows. Oh, <laughs> you like that? That was really good. That was good. Average Joes and Hoes with Bows. Or Joe Joes. Ooh. With and Sea Waz. Are you a Sea Wa or are you a Joe Joe? <laughs> <laughs> are you a hoe with a bow? I'm a, or are you an average Joe? I'm just an average Joe. Okay. okay. Just an average Joe. What mm-hmm. about you? I'm pretty average Joe today, for sure. Well, shit. What about you, ladies? I think I'm a bow with a hoe. I mean, a hoe with a bow. A hoe yeah. with a bow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an average Joe. No, yeah. Sydney, you can't even say that about yourself. Yeah. This girl just ran a marathon. Yeah, yeah dude. A marathon? <laughs> she ran yeah. 5K. Oh. A marathon is like 30 miles. <laughs> oh, I thought they were all considered marathons. No. I thought if they I were a really... long race of any type. Yeah, I just ran a marathon, she, I was AK. Say mini marathon. 5K. I am but, so impressed. Me too. Me. Seriously. Thank major you. props. Yes. I'm impressed with myself just because I really didn't think i was gonna do it and i know 5ks are literally nothing but yeah, oh, not literally something. nothing i, I could mean never. i could never it was hard but my sister i went out to austin um ultimately to support my sister who ran the half marathon that's so badass 13 miles damn yeah. god yeah i would simply pass away same <laughs> so they would simply have to wheel my ass off for sure road. ambulance poor big for, scene for sure big scene <laughs> they have they have those there just in case you know but oh, yeah. that yeah. Would get, I wouldn't be sure calling them. Yeah. Damn. So. Even five, I couldn't even run a mile. I couldn't even run half a mile. I can't even run a minute. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? This is so funny. Oh, God. So as I was saying to you guys in the beginning of the year, I was talking about my goals for the year and how I want to like try to run because I just do not run. Mm. Um, And I've been walking on an incline on the treadmill. That's been like my workout of choice for the past year and a half. And... I was telling, I told all of you guys that I can't even, it's really hard for me to even just do one minute. And I was telling Janelle about that. I'm like, God, I still can't like do more than a minute. I try. And then I all of a sudden realized that I'm trying to run at a 12%, percent, twelve and a half percent incline. <laughs> Stupid. So you probably I didn't even dawn on mountain. me. I just forgot. Like, I forget that it's incline because I do it the entire time. Like, as soon as I get on, I max it out because it just helps you. I mean, it's, you burn yeah. a lot more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, I've been trying to, run like five miles an hour up an incline mm-hmm. yeah so of course i'm dying and can't do more than a minute i said lower that bitch to yeah, flat like, and see what you God. can do okay well when i'm not sick because i've skipped my last two workouts i'm gonna try so let me maybe know I how can it run. goes maybe i, I bet can you run. you'll be amazed at your abilities yeah, I'll be like, this <laughs> is so damn easy i can't believe it never even dawned on me that is so funny dude you know, real dumb real dumb god lord lord help you <sighs> i know yeah five know. 5k ain't no yeah, I'm proud of you, Sid. Walk in the park, okay? Thank you, yeah. Well, it kind of is a walk in the park, right? Well, for, it's a run in the park. For some people. Was it in a park? No, it was, there was like a path. And, oh, yeah. Well, so the they gave you Gatorade, walk in the though, path. right? Well, yeah, so like once you get to like the halfway mark, it's not like real Gatorade, it's like watered down electrolytes, whatever. Oh. So they, mm-hmm. there's people so there like salty. candy. Do they give you like, a snack? No, it's a snack. <laughs> They're like, you're <laughs> a Dunkin' Donut. It should be like sponsored by Jimmy John's. Freaky yeah, fast, right yes. on the side. Just <laughs> But you get like a little like <laughs> gift bag afterwards that has little snacks. And I got a medal. I'm going to start, oh, you know. Oh, shit. Can you start wearing it? Why aren't you wearing it? Yeah. Why Please, is that been here? so funny if you showed up wearing A 5K medal. Yes. <laughs> it's uh, actually like it can be a be- belt buckle too. Because, you know, Austin, Texas. Yeehaw. Oh, yeehaw. Oh, yeehaw. Yeah. So maybe I'll put it on my belt. Sydney, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> yeah. I seriously could never do that. I feel like maybe you could. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Let's sign up for one. All of us. Uh, nope, I'm good. Maybe <laughs> me and Janelle will be on the sidelines. I'll be cheering, cheering for y'all. I'll, I'll be making y'all Jimmy John sandwiches. <laughs> I like walking. My boobs are just too big for running. I think you could get black eyes. Really bro. hurts. Exactly. <laughs> <Get all> the- <laughs> it really hurts. I bet it'd be hurting. I don't have that problem. Sadly, Mm-mm-mm. um, I've been w- doing our walks on the walking treadmill at work. Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm proud of you too. Thank you, Sporty it's- Spice. Yeah. Thank you. Still looking for a a treadmill on Facebook Marketplace to bring to my house. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's a good time. Mm-hmm. I love the treadmill. It, really? It's a good I do. Time. I've never thought I would say that, but I really love it. Good. I've been so sad. Not. I got really sick. Not really sick, but I haven't been sick in so long. I was literally I bragging on yeah, you, Tuesday night yeah. to Josh. 
I never get sick anymore because yeah. I I used to be chronically ill for those who didn't know. And I did ozone therapy for chronic mono or uh, reactivated Epstein-Barr virus. And so I was telling Josh, like, I think I just don't get sick anymore since that because it does boost your immune system oh, like crazy. Sure. And I never got COVID or anything. He's had the flu <laughs> twice and I it skipped me both times. So I'm like, I just don't get sick anymore. Literally the next day. I got a bad down. cold. Yeah, it was pretty gnarly. Yeah, you sound and like I think shit. I was just dramatic about it, though, because I haven't been sick in so long. Right. I forgot how shitty it is to have a sore throat. It really sucks. It's not a fun oh, time. It was awful. I haven't been sick in a long time, knock on wood, since I got COVID last fall. Oh, yeah. I forgot you got that. Yeah. Which I was like so Wait, confused about. did we all about, get COVID? I kept, test- no, I, didn't. I kept testing negative. Yeah, we all got it. Us three got it. Uh, you had it You had it at the same time we got it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But I kept testing negative. So I was like, it's not COVID. It's just like the flu. And then like two weeks later, I was still sick. Mm-hmm. So I tested and it's a positive. And I was like, well, that's fucking helpful. That's right, oh, yeah. and then remember you, it didn't show up as positive as first. You threw it out. And then I asked oh, you yeah. and you took it out of the trash. And so yeah. I saved your life. You say you did. You <laughs> saved my life. I called 911 immediately. <laughs> <after> <laughs> yeah, no. Sent your ass home. I, I waited 15 minutes. Wasn't positive. So I threw it in the trash. And then Ken, I was like, what'd you get? And I p- took it out of the trash to show her like, told you it's negative. And I looked and I was like, wait. <laughs> Was a lot. I thought you were fucking with me. Yeah, yeah I remember that. Oh, well, 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 I had so better. much binging TV time and I took two naps this weekend. Oh, I love taking naps. Oh, it was so amazing. I'm like, I want to skip working out because I have to work out when my daughter's sleeping. And then this weekend, I just Didn't. napped when she was sleeping. Mm. It was so nice. Mm-mm. I always get so jealous, like putting her in her crib, tucking her in. And then I'm like, all right, I'm going to go on the treadmill. Oh. Like, so jealous of you, one year old. <laughs> um. Yeah, it was so nice to take a nap. And then I, yeah, I watched, Crowley and I are watching Love is Blind. I'm going to get on that. Yeah, you guys need to. If you yeah. haven't yet, it is so good. God, this season is really good. Okay, I'm getting it. It's on Netflix? Yep. Okay. And they drop I a few episodes at a time. Let us know in the comments what you guys think so far if you're watching. It's, I really like this season. This might be my favorite season so far. I had never really, I didn't really like the last few seasons. Yeah, I watched the very first shitty. season and I liked that. That one I, was good. I never really got past the, um, like the, the the pods, I don't yeah. ever let like I never follow them to Mexico wherever they yeah. go to like to like live it up or whatever. Yeah, and then I usually come back for the weddings. But this <laughs> time I think I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna watch the whole. Thing. I'm gonna watch the whole thing. It's really good. Yeah, I need to watch that. So I'm wait, excited. where is it at right now? Yeah, where is it? They're uh, I think oh they've gone to Mexico now, so that's so they're already like yeah with the their couples partner. are assigned yeah, which I, is always kind of hard because sometimes you end up really like there was like one girl I really liked that didn't make it to the pods or past the pods. I was sad for her. But, and there was a guy I liked too. Guys, I kind of want to go on Love is Blind. I think it would be great. Wait, okay. it. So Dude, fun. I think I would be really good at it too. Like, I feel like yeah, I'd be good at that. Mm-hmm. Wait, Doing, how long do they someone... film for? How long does it take to film this shit? Like a couple uh, months. I remember we looked it up last time we talked about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like, like a shorter. Two months maybe. Yeah, I think it's a shorter like film. Mm. Yeah. Spent compared to like Big Brother or any other reality the TV. The Bachelor's no. only two months too, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, six weeks. Dude, you know what? Speaking of Big Brother. I found a new show on Netflix I think you would really like. What? It's kind of like Big Brother, but it's obviously shorter. It's all released. You yeah. can just binge it. I'm almost to the last episode. Lots of TV time this weekend. What's it called? Um, It's called The Trust. So it's I think like I've heard of that. a social game. It's hosted by Brooke Baldwin, um, ex-CNN oh, okay. reporter. Oh, so random. Okay. I know, but it's it's really, it's filmed like Love is Blind. Uh-huh. Like Netflix is is taking that high quality almost movie level production okay. but reality tv okay um but it's about a group of people there's like a giant pot of money called the trust mm-hmm. and then they bring in this group of people who are all kind of some of them are snaky some of them are trustworthy and they either move forward as a group through the entire thing and split the money or they like can vote people out oh and even if you, even if one person votes someone out they go Oh. Unless someone else votes for someone else and it gets counteracted. Oh. And there's all these secrets and oh, it's like, shit. it's real juicy. Okay. I'm about to finish it tonight. I'm right. so excited. I had to... a dream I was on it. Oh. Damn, it's yeah, fun. I got to check that out. And I'll definitely watch Love is Blind because you guys have convinced me. And I felt like I had FOMO last season. Yeah. Yeah. There's only um six episodes right now. Are they then, each an hour? Um, Right around. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it's, then. It flies by though. It's easy watch. The next group of episodes comes out on the 21st. So. In a couple days. Okay. And to okay. clarify, I was saying it's like Big Brother. It's it's not entirely like Big Brother because I know I'll get comments. It's There's no like physical games. Gotcha. It's just a, so- a social mental game. manipulation. Yeah. Okay. You Men- know, we should watch the episode, like go through them. Like you, tell me when you start okay. first episode and then 
one of love is blind yeah okay maybe you guys should do the thing i always tell you about where you watch it with a towel over the tv <laughs> so that you can't see the people <laughs> no i'll be so every bored. season i'm like i'm gonna do that and then I'm just like that just sounds so boring that's, no i need yeah. to watch it so yeah i can judge the people. adhd for that yeah judge the people i mean that's <laughs> what reality tv is for i'm so sorry mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i've that's been true. doing my biannual jersey shore watch this weekend oh i saw you started that good for you yep. i'm proud how yep. far are you almost through season one beautiful mm-hmm. beautiful i watch it and i play solitaire on my phone like a real mm. winner so how did you discover patrick dempsey and oh, i'm curious oh, what right. happened Wait, there what janelle texted us the other night and was like yeah. guys did you know patrick dempsey and robert downey jr are two different people For i real? don't remember how i even came to that conclusion i was at dinner with my friend and at, now at i don't friend. remember actually how but i was so mind blown my friend was like you're an idiot and she's literally laughing at me and i was like wait a second those are two different people wait Patrick Dempsey. Oh, I know who? why. She was talking about Robert Downey Jr. Who's McDreamy, McSteamy, whatever. Yeah, oh, was this Kayla? Who yeah, who is that? That's, that's Patrick that's Dempsey. Patrick Dempsey. So I said Robert Downey Jr. and she literally McDreamy. busted off. She's like, no, you idiot. That's not him. And I was like, <laughs> oh. God, people really think you just do this as a troll. They I think it's was funny. so confused okay. and, and embarrassed. And then I texted you guys. And then I literally Googled them. They look like the same person. Mm-hmm. I'm going to back you up on that, Janelle. They Thank are very, Corelli. they're a little similar no, looking. No, they yeah. are not. They look like the Thank you. They do not. Same. No. Okay, if you, if you squint I got so your many eyes. Like, Dude. What the hell? Squinchers. No, not even. They, they I guess they the have same. similar hair types. Um, Hold on now, 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 now. I can see it. I can. Now, 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 now. Patrick Dempsey is so much more attractive well oh, patrick yeah. dempsey is just like softer looking than robert Downey. patrick dempsey is so hot is patrick dempsey the iron man guy no, no. that's <laughs> that's downey jr okay so what the hell i think they're both attractive <laughs> doesn't mean they're both the they same are people. both attractive <laughs> they look the- no not even close my Carly, dear type in type in um hmm, patrick dempsey's getting that salt and pepper hair He's looking pretty nice he's on like, him. He's looking pretty good. Type in both of their names together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or say, why do they look the why? like? Because that's what I Google. I said, why do Patrick Dempsey and Robert Downey <laughs> Jr. look alike? And there is literally a picture why? of them. They look so- well, they're actually <laughs> half brothers. <laughs> Twins. No. I see it. Twins. No, 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 no. Is that them making out? That's what I was just going to say. I was oh, like, damn, cute. cute. That. It's, I love now, you. Now, who's the one we'll on pool. Interstellar? Oh my god, <laughs> Matthew McConaughey! Oh my god, shut up! I swear, I'm not making this up, you guys. I sound so stupid. Okay, don't tell me you think he looks like either of them, because that—that I cannot even rationale. Matthew McConaughey looks around. like McConaughey. Dream- <laughs> Matthew, McConaughey. <laughs> Matthew McConaughey looks like McDreamy. No. Wow, God, I'm so confused. I swear, you guys, I am not making this up. I was so I confused on Friday. He looks like. He's no, hot. They're all, think see, all three of them has like somewhat curly hair. They look alike. No, they they do. They all someone back me up on this. Hot. I know someone in the comments will be like, yes. Okay. Are, Since we're bringing up the three of them. Okay. Kill Mary Fuck. Okay. Downey well, Jr. Um, Dempsey. McConaughey. Uh okay. So, well, just off of pure looks. <laughs> well, they all look the exact same. Okay. Hold on. I'm gonna hold on. Let me add a picture of all three of them. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> no. That's Tony Stark, right? Yes. Okay. I remember that movie. I saw that movie. It was good. Okay, so I'll do mine. Okay. I will kill Patrick. No, no, no. I will kill Robert Downey Jr. This is hard. They're all like Marys. So um, I will... <laughs> I will fuck McConaughey. McConaughey's hot. And I will marry... I'd fuck McConaughey too. Dempsey. I agree with everything you just said. I uh, highly disagree. Me. You mm, disagree. Okay, what do you say? I would say, Mary Dempsey, um, kill McConaughey because I think he is one of the ugliest motherfuckers. I'm so, oh, I know, Corelli. Oh I know, spicy you think take. He's ugly. I think he's like not attractive. Oh at all. my god, he is. And hot. he is fuck so Robert hot. Downey. Mm, that man is scrumdiddlyumptious. They're all scrumdiddlyumptious. I say. All right, Sydney. What about you? Um, <clears throat> it's really hard between Matthew McConaughey and Patrick. I think I would marry Matthew McConaughey. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. Because so it could continue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You get him every night. Fucking... He's the hottest to you? I think he's the hottest. Yeah. Okay. See, see Dempsey's see. the hottest to me. Uh, but not, I guess now is Dempsey's Dempsey, hotter. Wait, that's McSteamy, now, right? Here, go, yeah. to the, yeah. go to the outline. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I agree with you on like marrying Patrick Dempsey. Who's the guy with the glasses? Just Derek Shepard seems like a good husband. Yeah, you know, he does. 
Wait, as long as he doesn't get hit by a truck. Derek Shepard, who's that? Grey's Anatomy. Oh, oh yeah. that's yeah. McSteamy? Yeah. yeah. No, that's McDreamy. There's McSteamy and McDreamy. Oh, there is? Yeah. Are yeah. they both McSteamy. in the same show? Yes. And let's do, let's bring the two of them up so you can decide which one's hotter out of the two of them. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I ma'am. want your opinion. <laughs> McSteamy versus McDreamy. Type that in. Oh, yeah, McSteamy's ugly. Who's that? Oh, you what? think Mistimi? Yeah, not a fan. Oh god, you haven't seen him with his shirt off when he's soaking wet. <laughs> he's <laughs> hot. No, I don't like After him. After that plane crash. No, I don't like him. No. Really? No. So you think Dempsey's hotter? Definitely, 100 percent Like not even close. The guy looks like he has ramen for hair. No offense to him. <laughs> What's wrong okay, with ramen hair? I mean, his body's hot, duh. Ooh, oh, and he's oh, really look steaming. He's steaming. Oh, he's I mean, yeah, steaming. I wouldn't be mad oh, if his yeah. towel fell for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but like, if I had to pick the between the two, definitely the other dude. See, I gotta go make steamy. Yeah, make steamy's doing something to me. Mm-hmm. He's <laughs> steamy. gonna say this is steamy. Steamy. <laughs> Wow. All right, all right. Let's rein it in here, people. Rein it in. Let us know in the comments. What a man! I'm getting. Go- I'm literally getting goosebumps looking at steamy. He oh. is so hot, right? Hmm. Mark Sloan is his name in the show. That's right. That's right. Mm. Okay. Well, Interesting. on the menu today. Wait, who's well, the guy that in oh that God, one? This is never going to end. <laughs> really quick, because I'm pretty sure it's one of these guys. That one movie that's with Reese Witherspoon. <laughs> what? Like 25. One mo- no, one of them. Describe are- it. The movie. Um, She like, isn't she like a city girl and she like <laughs> visits... Oh, she visits Alabama. Sweet home Alabama. That's oh, the video. That's I actually the video. just watched that on Sweet the plane this year for the first time. Oh, uh, who's in that? That's, that's one of the guys with. No, that's isn't that Dax Shepard? No, that's. Uh, <laughs> oh no, it is Patrick Dempsey. Thank you. Oh, it's Patrick Dempsey. Thank you. Sorry, so I barely pissed, paid attention to that. We have to start though with your guys's pickle rims. <gasps> oh, oh yes. Oh okay. A rim Switching shot. Seven. So I found these in Austin. They're like salted rim sticker things, but, but I found pickle pick- flavor. Yeah, they look like I've seen these all over TikTok. They're kind of like. Airheads. Yeah, they look like you can put multiple around, but All right, I'm going in. So it's probably not like the first thing you do is put this with beer, but this is all we had. And for no, those I, of you oh, who it, thought we were pregnant last week, it's now it, you know. It's beer salt. Not. Yeah, Holy it's beer shit. salt. Sid, you try it first. All right. Ooh, I like it. I like it too. It's mm. really sour. Bite mm. bite a piece of it. You'll get more pickle. Ooh, I got it. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's sour. It's happening. This is good, Sydney. Thank you. Mm. You can start putting it around your water bottle. I'm like corona? just lick on this like a guinea pig yeah. the whole time. Damn, yeah, we're like guinea pigs uh, 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 with a salt lick. Mm. <laughs> mm. This is so oh, good. Did you wow. ever lick your guinea pig salt lick? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Mm, I, I would have thought you tried guinea pig treats. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you? I remember something about guinea pig treats and oh. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did once. <laughs> Okay. That's all. Well, moving on. <laughs> I never tried. I never had a guinea pig, though. I used to take my <laughs> guinea pig salt lick and so take a little lick. So where did you get lick. the treats? Yeah. Oh, um, salt my lick. friend. I was at my friend's house, and she like she was literally eating it like checks, like trail mix. It was like popping in her mouth. Yeah. And I was like, let me have a taste of that. Oh, my God. This is a funny story. Back in college, when I first started YouTube, I did... It wasn't even sponsored. I would be sent like free product to do you know like reviews on so janelle and i would do them together oh yeah and this one like food company sent us a bunch of treats and like well snacks and stuff and we were trying them and janelle said (laughs) one of them tasted like guinea pig treats and And i just left it in i uploaded it and they got so mad yeah and then you got mad at me you're like why'd you say that i was like why'd you put it in there (laughs) you're like you can't say that next time or we're not gonna get free free snacks i was being paid i'm like the nerve of this company to have any feedback when you're doing we're doing this for free (laughs) i was like what that's so Uh, funny i remember that video yeah you were like getting pretty they're like we don't like that Mm -hmm. you just refrain from calling things getting pictures (laughs) (laughs) he's refrain (laughs) well that's so funny man (sighs) okay we're sorry that was quite the intro Mm. But we're not sorry, truly. We're not sorry at all. I know you guys love our rant and raving. Mm-hmm. Well, sometimes some of you do, some of you hate it. But there's yeah. always timestamps in the description if you don't want to hear us babbling. Yeah, about that's the thing. Shit. I know some people get real pissy. Sorry, we make chapters so you can skip around. That's right, honey. But let's get into our topics. We have a lot to go over. Okay. Surprisingly, some people like to hear our idiot asses talk. Idiot asses talk. <laughs> idiot asses. <laughs> our idiot asses. Okay. So today we have several spicy topics to go over i would say so we're going to be talking about the virgin stingray okay we'll explain that crazy 
Yes, it is crazy. Also, there's some heat going um, on also. in the world of Sounds Jojo like a- Siwa, Siwa in the bows. Siwa. This is actually pretty bad. Yeah, it's it's really bad. Um, pretty gnarly. And yeah, there's a lot to go over with that. So this really is like a salt lick. It's really salty. It'd be good on a margarita. Yeah. Mm, give me one margarita. So as I've talked about on the show before, I have been on a bit of a health journey in the last year and a half, and I have lost about 55 pounds. I'm really proud of that. And I've just tried to really improve my overall nutrition and eat as best as I can. But one of the biggest challenges for me with that is getting something unhealthy during the workday. It's so easy to want to do DoorDash or run and get something quick and delicious that may not always be healthy, but I have been able to eat healthier thanks to Factor. Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals make eating better every day easy. Wherever tomorrow takes you, you can be ready with pre-prepared, chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. You'll have over 35 options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. They have two-minute meals. You can fuel up fast with Factors restaurant-quality meals that are ready to heat and eat wherever you are. Snacks, smoothies, and more. You can discover a variety of easy options for the entire day, like breakfast, midday bites, and more. And God, you guys, I'm telling you, these Factor meals are absolutely delicious, and it makes eating healthy so much easier when you don't feel... (laughs) deprived. Factor is truly the perfect solution if you're looking for fast upscale options that are done easy and they're flexible for your schedule. You can get as much or as little as you would like by choosing six to 18 meals per week. Plus you can pause and reschedule your deliveries at any time. There's no prep, no mess. It's just easy. So head to factormeals.com slash sesh50 and use code sesh50 to get that 50% off. That's code sesh50 at factormeals.com slash sesh50 to get 50% off. All right, shall we begin? Let's begin. Let's talk about the stingray, because this is wild. Charlotte the stingray and the immaculate conception. You sent me this. Yep. I saw this. this. It blew my mind. I knew I wanted to talk about it. So there's this small aquarium in North Carolina that has become the center of attention, the talk of the town, after one of their stingrays has become pregnant, which may not sound very exciting, but what makes it crazy is... There is no male stingray in her tank. So how did this happen? That's the true mystery. Let's meet her real quick. Yep. Here's Charlotte. She is a round stingray. Uh, Stingray. Stingray. (laughs) (laughs) She sings. She's about the size of a serving plate, which is kind of hard to... Yeah, what does that even mean? There's many sizes of serving plates. Like a big serving plate, I imagine. Like a... Like a... Like a thing like a charger, turkey like type, a, like a dinner, like a dinner plate. Okay, okay, okay. I love stingrays; they're so cute. A serving plate is different than a dinner plate, though. The article says serving plate, serving <laughs> platter. <laughs> okay, a platter. I'm thinking is like this, like a charola. I agree. Like a big enough for a turkey. A turkey. Okay, so she's a big girl. Okay, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, she's a thick girl. You can see her. Morning from the aquarium and shark lab here in Hendersonville. Charlotte's going to come around and wish everyone a good morning. She is still carrying. Oh, yeah, that's definitely as, as big pop, as a turkey pop, potter, I'd say. You know, for no sure. How many. Bigger and bigger. There, you can Look see at that. Her. Mama. She is so little cute. Mama I belly love poking in there. Me. Ew, I just want to cuddle it. You with CNN. This They're so soft. You go, Charlotte. Soft. Let's keep these kids and these folks getting interested in science. Their little smiles. So and cute. what's going on in our oceans and world. And just keep opening those doors of wonder and discovery. Just keep swimming. Thank you for all of your support, everyone. This tank Char- looks too small Thanks. for Charlotte. She's so happy. Agreed. Especially because she <laughs> shares it with several sharks, which we will find out. Look at her little mouth. God, she's <laughs> so cute. They're like pancakes with faces. They are. I love them. So experts say that she's pregnant with as many as four pups. And she could give birth any day now. I didn't know that stingray babies were called pups. That's pretty cute. It's really cute. Pancake pups. Oh, pancake puff. God, now I want pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> so her tank, as you saw, it's pretty small. It's about 2,200 gallons or about the size of a construction dumpster. And she sh- also shares it, which I guess would probably be okay for her, right? I don't know. But she not- shares it with five male sharks. But the sharks are small. No, but still, it just seems, I mean, it's, I don't know. Once she does give birth, they want to relocate her to a bigger um, tank. Mm. Yeah, y'all. But I don't. I don't know if they have like the, the resources for that. Mm. I'm sure they do now that she's like a viral sensation. Yeah, hopefully. At first, 
Charlotte's caretakers noticed a lump on her back that was blowing up like a biscuit. Mm, biscuits. I love good. that. Of course, in North Carolina, you, they use that analogy. Of course biscuits. They do. Biscuits. Well, at first they thought it was cancer. Poor girl. But then she got an ultrasound and that's when they found out she was pregnant and they were fucking shocked because how could this have happened? Let's watch her ultrasound. A very cute moment for anyone. Yes. I wonder if she cried. She cried because she was like, what happened? <laughs> she says, I'm Mary. Fair. I deserve my own tank. That's crazy. You can see it moving around in there. Oh, I see, girl. God, they're so cute. I want to kiss her. Very cute. So who the hell knocked up this little girl? Well, Janelle had her own theory. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> so Kendall, you know I had to bring this up. Kendall sent the TikTok to the group. And I clicked on it. I, oh, I started watching it. But before they got to the part of like, maybe it's the shark, so we don't know. I thought that's... <laughs> I thought some sick motherfucker stuck their dick inside. Poor, what's her name? Charlotte. Charlotte. I was you know like what? so bothered for a second. I was like, this is so fun. And I was like, humans would do this. Some sick, yeah. horny ass bitch. I wouldn't be shocked. Who worked the aquarium probably tried to fuck this poor stingray. In 2024, we would see some shit yes. like that. And so, I, I, but and then I was like, oh, that's not the theory at all. So I texted him. I was like, tell me why at first. I thought that stuff would knocked her up. Well, we just got done hearing about Noel. So, mm -hmm. right, right, right. You know, our minds are everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> you never know what could happen. I was happen. so confused when you said that because I hadn't watched the TikTok yet. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> Me too. I was like, <laughs> and then, yeah, I clicked really quick though. They're white spotted bamboo sharks named Larry and Mo that are in her tank. They're so oh, cute. Larry and Mo, do they have curly too? What? The Three Stooges. Oh, oh right, 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 right. I thought, I thought they were calling me for, I was like, maybe <laughs> curly. <laughs> Well, so the, basically there's two theories. We don't know which one is going to be. I mean, I, actually, there's three theories. Either she really is the Virgin Mary <laughs> or oh, she, Jesus is coming back. It was one of the sharks. This is literally Jesus being like warning motherfuckers. Yeah. The, what is it called when he comes? Immaculate. The second coming of oh. Christ. <laughs> right. I think. <laughs> Immaculate conception. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah, she was found full of shark bites which oh. is really scary and that could signal that she got it on with one of the sharks because you know they do love bites it's part of their mating but they say it's impossible yeah because of the dna structure it's different yeah like even i mean is it impossible for the sex to happen or is no. it impossible for her to because, conceive? well because their sizes and because the dna structure mm. yeah the dna their dna structure because they're not even the same like they're not the same species they're not even the same like uh, I don't think they're the same category of animal. Right. Like they're fish, but I don't think they're, they're yeah. not, they're like. Well, sharks lay eggs and stingrays right. are so mammals. How would, yeah, but there, mammals there are people they that eggs. think that this is a first time for everything situation. And that we're going to get a shark ray or a sting shark. It says it's impossible. For shark yeah, ray. No. A sting ray. Shark so, ray would be but wild. Now there is a rare, very rare phenomenon that some fish, bugs, birds, reptiles, amphibians experience, okay? Where they impregnate themselves. Mm. Can you try to pronounce that? I would like to see oh. you take a shot at that one. What? Uh, what? Wait. Of the process of the impregnating super yourself. weird can happen to some... I'll try. Parthenogenesis. Parthenogenesis. Yeah. Oh, all Parthenogenesis. Right. Also, it's hard to say as it looks. Asexual reproduction. Mm -hmm. I need to correct you, Janelle. According to the internet, they're not mammals. Shit. Um, because oh. they're not warm blooded. Um, but they give birth to live things. They have cartilaginous, cartilaginous, cart basically cartilages bones, and they don't have any like callus, cal right. by Jones bones. <laughs> Jones. <laughs> this is um, the science show. This is the science Bell show with Corelli. Guy. <laughs> Wait, I thought that mammals are mammals because they give birth to live things. Like no, yeah, I thought so not eggs. no. There's a lot of different classifications. Okay. They, have to, they have to be. They have to fall under like every category. Level. Goes deeper. They are. I don't know how to say this word. Ella small branches. Ella small branches. <laughs> All right. Ella small branches. They're not. But yeah, they're, they're not that. Though. They're a type of fish. So maybe she got impregnated herself, though. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this can happen to fish, birds, reptiles, and yeah. amphibians. Yes. So it's probably, that's probably what it is, right? Probably. She's just a rare girl. Probably. She's just a real girly pop. All right. Well, that, wait, how crazy would it be, though, if it was half shark, half ray? Dude. Hell yeah. As of recording this, 
Charlotte hasn't given birth yet. Yeah. So it is um February 19th when we are recording this. It's yeah. possible that she gives birth by the time this goes up or probably by the time we record next week. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah, so we'll, we'll know the truth then maybe. Well, or maybe they have to do, do more update. tests and maybe it'll take a while to determine how this happened. Mm-hmm. But I'm sure it'll be pretty obvious that if it is a shark ray, we'll probably know that right off the bat. Probably, like right off the bat. Yeah. Or it's a it's a human and your original theory was Ew. right. Okay, see, I originally thought we were going to have to come on here and be like some sick motherfucker <laughs> and like be Maybe like there disgusted is. by some animal There's a sicko aquarium employee that's like, hopefully they never find out. Oh Ew. no, my time is coming to an end. Oh my God, let's hope not. No, that's God, disgusting. Poor Charlotte. Of course that's it's disgusting. Obviously, we're not actually making fun of it. It just probably didn't actually happen. <laughs> okay. Let's cross let's, our let's fingers. Let's all pray that we are not at that point in society where people are fucking stingrays okay <laughs> we'll find out in about like two weeks or so yeah i think so buckle in I never know if, what could happen in what this if this world. is the end of the world what do you mean <laughs> like what if this string like what if charlotte like brings upon like like oh god rat? like she's i'm gonna hit the conspiracy land with that no i'm gonna be a little bit <laughs> people decide that something is the sign of the end of the world like every other week yeah that's true I'm joking. Really I don't. I. I, I really day, do think. I'd say. I this, do think that she's a asexual reproducer. This yeah. is the sign that <laughs> yep. this stingray. Yep. Well, you know what? If it's Breaking the news. <laughs> You're all fucked. <laughs> I normally find bras to be so uncomfortable and annoying. Usually, I just opt out of wearing one in general. Or if I do wear one, I take it off as soon as I get in my house. But Skims has completely changed that because their bras and underwear and loungewear, literally everything they make, is so so comfortable. Skims bras are worth the hype for the amazing shape and support they give. I've been wearing Skims for, I don't know, close to a year now. And I more recently have been trying their bras and I absolutely love them. They're so comfortable, especially the Fits Everybody t-shirt bra. It is one of the best bras I've ever owned. I also love the no-show balconette bra from Skims. I love the fact that it supports me and really keeps my natural shape and is invisible under clothing. That's a huge thing I hate when bras show under clothing. It drives me crazy. Um, But it's so comfortable. I don't even notice I'm wearing it. And it's really, really cute. So John loves it too, folks. Just saying. And whether you're a part of the IBTC like I am, or maybe you got some big girlies to support, they've got something for everyone, I promise you. Also, I love the way that all of the items that I have from Skims wash so well. I cannot stand when I wash a bra like once or twice and it gets all stretched out and the elastic gets all messed up and crinkly. It drives me crazy, but Skims bras come out of the wash feeling and looking brand new every single time. So shop Skims bras at skims.com, now available in 62 sizes, 38 to 46 H. Plus get free shipping on orders over $75. And if you haven't yet, be sure to let them know that we sent you. After you place your order, select podcast in the survey and select our show in the drop down menu that follows. Let's oh, talk about boy. Jojo Siwa. Okay, so let's start out by doing a little crash course on crash course. Jojo Shiwa <laughs> and Jessalyn Siwa, her mother. Mm-hmm. Now, I needed this because I honestly have not really followed Jojo's career have very much. Have you watched Dance Moms? Not when Jojo was on it. Okay, see, Dance Moms was my shit. It was, huh? I with loved Jojo? it. Yes. I never saw it with her. Same. Yeah, I watched um, a lot of seasons. I mean, not like the last handful of them, but. I actually didn't know that she came from that show. I always just thought she was a YouTuber. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Well, she first appeared on this other show um, called Abby's Ultimate Dance Competition, and she was the oh, final five. Like a spinoff? No, this was before Dance Moms. Oh. Or no, 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 it wasn't. No, it was during. Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah, you're right. It was like a dance competition, though. Like, a, like Abby was like looking for the next dancer for right. her for her studio. Mm. <clears throat> so Dance Moms was already going. Um, Because, yeah, she didn't come on until season four of Dance Moms. But anyways, she got final five, but then was eliminated. Um, And then she went on Dance Moms and she auditioned in Orlando. And then she was asked to join the Abby Lee Dance Company. Abby scares me. I don't know what to say. She's very intimidating. The whole show scares me. All the girls are always crying. The moms oh, are always fighting. Horribly abusive and sad, that show. Also incredibly entertainment for the mother drama, though. The mother drama was like, good. The mom's fighting was, it I was lived for it. It was pretty top tier. Yeah. I really did live for it. Now, if you don't know, it's kind of a side note, but Jess actually owned her own dance studio in Nebraska. So she already kind of had that stage mom persona, mm, mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm. And she wanted Jodo to be a star from day one. In fact, she started bleaching her hair 
when she was just a toddler bleaching her toddler's hair oh my god that's gotta be so dangerous dude remember um toddlers and tiaras oh yeah that shows talk about abuse that shows remember the flappers the fake teeth oh yeah god that is so whack way to ruin your child's self-esteem for the rest of their lives yeah and yeah she wanted her to be the next hannah montana justin yeah Mm. anyway so she's on the show for a while she ends up leaving the show in 2016 and it gets signed uh, to Nickelodeon in 2017. And by this time, her whole character is like those giant, bo- she wears yeah. those giant bows, the neon colored dresses, the glitter everywhere. She would sell bows. And this is crazy, you guys. Yeah, this blew my mind. She sold 40 million hair bows in 2018. <gasps> oh my God. And, and she was everywhere and still is. Like she was on all every toy every piece of clothing yeah i mean they put her name on everything maybe it just wasn't around a lot of younger people but i feel like i never really saw people rocking hair bows out in public neither did i so 40 million of them are around and we never saw it mm-hmm. but apparently i like, think it's younger like yeah that's way younger, okay. younger than us like the teens yeah but even like i never saw like a little girl at target wearing a big bow Really? Well, you maybe you saw it and you just didn't think anything of it because it's like, who cares? Maybe, yeah. Well, I mean, I don't think little girls were like rocking like big ass like Lady Gaga bows. Mm. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. I think that was more just like JoJo's thing. And then she had her bows were like pretty normal size. Mm-hmm. Right. She also uh, started doing YouTube. And she has a ton of videos on YouTube and tons of followers. She's very successful on YouTube. She's done a collab with JCPenney. She's appeared on Lip Sync Battle Shorties. She's also competed in The Masked Singer and Dancing with the Stars. She has a board game. Like, she's li- everywhere. Lip Sync Battle Shorties. <laughs> so it's it's uh, it's with Nick <laughs> Cannon. It's with Nick Cannon. Miss- it would be. And it's the same thing as, as like, <laughs> Wild and Out. But oh, my with God. Kids. <laughs> wow. Were you just joking or is that real? No, I'm being real. Yeah, Nick Cannon really hosted Lip Sync mm-hmm. Battle Shorties. I'm pretty... Okay. I'm pretty uh, <laughs> nice. She was on Dancing with the Stars. Yep. She was the first same-sex couple to compete. Yes. Her and her partner. Now, fun fact. Before we get into this latest controversy, let's talk about this for a sec. Because she had a board game, like I said. And this is a little creepy. It's called, it was called JoJo's Juice JoJo's Game. Juice. juice. I hate that so much. Juice. It's like a <laughs> truth or dare game, kind of. I don't really understand. It's like questions that you and your friends like go around and ask each other. And you wear bows. It kind of looks like... Remember that game... Pretty Little Princess or yes, something. Yes, really with the necklaces and yeah, shit. Mm-hmm. That was a fun game. Remember Mall Madness? No, that sounds fun. Though. It was a really fun. Time. Remember Mousetrap? Oh, I loved Mousetrap. Mm-hmm. I do, but I can't remember the game. I never played it. My favorite game was Operation. But I had this major fear of the sound, so yeah. we had to play with the batteries out. I, the, it was scary. <laughs> it was, it's so loud. It's like, yeah. Startling. Um. So she had this board game. And there was big controversy because there was questions about being arrested in nudity on this game. Yeah. Now, if you look at the game, it says ages six and over. So why are y'all talking about twerking, for example? Or have you ever stolen from a store? Mm -hmm. Make two laps around the table while imitating a monkey. Have you ever gone outside without underwear? A bathing suit doesn't count. Okay, that is disgusting. Learned about the art of twerking. (laughs) Have you ever walked in on someone naked or had someone walk in on you? Ew, this is really, really bad. Have you ever been arrested? What? They're six. (laughs) Arrested? (laughs) JoJo claims that she had no idea that, you know, these questions were on there and was absolutely disgusted. Probably didn't have any idea. I would probably agree with that. You would think someone, maybe the mother, would take a look at it before you put your name on it. Or her, like, agent or someone. Anyone on the team. Come on. Yeah. Um, Yeah, so... I mean, well, that's what happens when you're pumping out so much damn merch. You barely have a chance to look at it. Mm-hmm. Nickelodeon said, we respect and value the relationship JoJo Siwa has with her fans and take the concerns raised regarding the game JoJo's Juice very seriously. But anyway, JoJo's Jungle Juice. <laughs> good one, Kendall. <laughs> you're welcome. Very good. Yeah, I mean, look at her. She's got everything. Watches, t-shirts, undies, God, necklaces, bracelets, a watches, a couch. A couch. Socks. Socks. Oh, hell, it's a whole JoJo world. It is. Needless That's to say. Ripping off Lisa Frank, that backpack. Totally. Is, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, I think totally there's a scandal is. going on with Lisa Frank right now. I saw a little something about it, but I didn't look into it. But she was my entire childhood growing up. I loved her art so much. I still do, unfortunately. 
I just liked those fuzzy planners because they were fun to touch. And they mm-hmm. had little like locks. Yeah, the little feet. journal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah, she has over 60 million followers and 3.6 billion views on YouTube. God, that's so She massive. is so successful. Yeah. I mean, Super God, her successful. net worth, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Well, girl drives like a... She has a like custom Tesla. Oh, she yeah. has her face on it. I don't know if she still has it. Well, she's got like multiple. Like this is the oh, yeah. JoJo car. That's wild her net worth is estimated at 20 million i don't know why you would that seems like dangerous that people would know it's you i mean when you have a following isn't it important to like be as stealthy as possible i don't know i think she does drive it because we just watched a video or something about her yeah doing like an interview or something and she like, gets out of her thing yeah yeah where they asked her like for her opinion on yeah and she gets immigration her, like, or something yeah it was kind of a weird question for jojo seawalk yeah <laughs> Oh, by the way, her fans refer to themselves as c God, I hate fan culture. The name c with a Z. Of course it has a Z. <laughs> fan culture. Ugh. We could do a whole episode on fan culture. I could. I have so much to say. <laughs> anyway. Anyways. I won't today. Our next sponsor is ZocDoc. And you guys know how much Janelle and I love ZocDoc, how long we have been using ZocDoc. We rave about it all the time, so I won't get repetitive with that once again. But... Truly, I can't recommend it to you enough if you are looking for a good doctor and don't want to go through the difficulties of trying to find one on your own. These days, we check reviews for everything, people, restaurants, movies, apps. I mean, you name it. And so why not check reviews for doctors? ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. Once you find the doc you want, you can book them immediately. There's no more awkwardly waiting on hold with a receptionist. And all these docs have verified reviews from actual real patients, which is what makes it so great. We're talking about booking appointments with tens of thousands of top rated patient reviewed credible doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for ones that take your insurance, which is huge. Also are located near you and treat basically any condition you're searching for. The typical wait time to see a doctor booked on ZocDoc is just between 24 and 72 hours. That's it. And sometimes guys, you can even score same day appointments. So go to ZocDoc.com slash sesh and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash sesh, ZocDoc dot com slash sesh. Fast forward here to 2021, and she and her mom hosted a TV series called Siwa's Dance Pop Revolution. And it was basically like a competition show. So you have like, they're making like the new girl pop group called X-O-M-G. Pop. 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 Thank you. (laughs) Her and her mom select 11 girls from the country to compete for a spot in the group of XOMG pop. XOMG pop. So I uh, watched some of this show. I was going to ask. So, I kind of wanted to watch it. Yes, I did watch actually a lot of it. Was it fun? <laughs> Tell us. Uh, it's just they're over the top. Like they come into her, their mansion, they bring the girls yeah. or whatever. And it's like bows and candy and all this kind of stuff. Like you guys should get on Peacock and just watch the first okay. episode. Okay. But, okay. okay. Just so you know, XOMG Pop, Jess go in the show, she explained, she's like, XO, of course, for like hugs and kiss or mm-hmm. kiss and hug. Mm-hmm. And then OMG, because. Right. Oh my God. That's how we want to introduce our group. Like XOMG Pop. Like that's how she says it. XOMG Pop. <laughs> Thank you. Sydney? Can we? There you go, yeah. I think it's probably copyrighted, but can we just like pull up a little bit on YouTube and watch like a couple seconds and like do like little, I think there's kind of a way we can get around copyrighted. We can, we can just try. do like little spurts. YouTube's getting real smart these days. Yeah, well, we might be smarter. XOMG pop. XOMG pop. Why is that so fun to say? Oh, is that That's Jess? her mom. Okay. These are all the girls entering the house. Here they come in. Okay. Dude, oh, Jojo's house is crazy. Her house is crazy. Wow. Wow. Oh, my God. All I've seen it on Colleen's because her and Colleen are best friends or oh, whatever. Right. And back, when, yeah. back before that all, all happened. I and she defended Colleen. Her that dog. Was fucking yeah, weird. her rainbow. dog is literally rainbow. They're showing Sequins. all this stuff. These girls are so young. Oh, my God. This is making me really uncomfortable already. And look at how they talk to them. They stand at the top of the stairwell. Oh, oh no. It's giving like Chris Jenner. They're like, yes, masters. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. There's eight episodes in the Good series. God. Even the mom wears the stuff. Wow. Oh, yeah. So There's it consisted of a bunch of eliminations. Oh, all the moms are there. The girls mm. were judged on their stage presence, including their dancing and singing skills. But it's weird because the show actually 
was pit when it was pitched, it wasn't pitched as a competition show. From what I read, it was kind of pitched as like a like more of a reality show. Yes, they were going to compete for spots, but it was more. It wasn't like I, I didn't know that it was going to be like elimination type sure. of thing. Like mm-hmm. it, because I mean, these girls are so young, right? Well, and the thing is, the show covers more so in the sense of the group they have. Like before this, I believe they have like because JoJo and her mom go all over the country to find these. Right, seven girls. So it's more of like a reality show about these seven mm. girls and their them doing their competitions journey. and stuff. Seeking yeah, talent. So it had um, a bunch of little girls, eight to fourteen: Kaya, Brooklyn, Leah, mm-hmm. Dallas, Kinley, Tamara, and Bella. They're cute. So their first single was "Candy Hearts." By the way, you have a small piece of salt on your lip. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm, delicious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, Candy Hearts. God, look at their outfits. They're so cute. So the group started out as the seven main girls, like we said, and a couple of sources close to the production said that the team sold Dance Pop Revolution as a kinder version of Dance Moms. Now, one source said, with what Jess and JoJo went through on Dance Moms, we thought they wouldn't want to do anything that would make a child feel a certain way or paint them in a certain light. That was my first thought, too, when we found this story is my like a lot of what I do know about Jojo Siwa, which isn't a lot, is I've seen her videos talking about like the abuse and trauma yeah, that she went through brutal. on Dance Moms. And so when I saw that they were trying to create something like Dance Moms, that was I'm like, what? This mm-hmm. isn't mathing here. Why would you want to do something to other kids mm-hmm. in any way, shape, or form? Yeah. And it sounds like this is very much like Dance Moms. In, in some ways, yeah. In, yeah. So producers apparently encourage tension between contestants. That's great. Encouraging tension between 8 to 14 year olds. Granted, pretty much every reality competition show, they want that because it plays with the drama. However, these contestants are children, one of them being eight years old. So that's great. Um, But turns out that being a part of XOMG Pop was an absolute nightmare for the members. And now one of them has actually come forward to break her silence. So the sea was in the production team dangled the carrot of stardom in front of the young girls, promising money, fame, and notoriety. And one source said the highs were high and the lows were lows. So Angie and Leah Sanderson are speaking out for the first time and share their story with the Rolling Stones about their journey being part of this show. So yeah, this article came out last Tuesday. And Angie says that they were in a dark place for a long time but they'd have time to heal and recover and are now ready to speak about it and share. So Leah had always dreamed of dancing, but it was never going to be easy for her because she was born with spina bifida. And if you don't know what that is, I mean, I'm not an expert, but it's a birth defect where the spinal cord fails to perform properly. So growing up, she was always at the school nurse. She said that school nurse is actually her best friend um, and spent a lot of her early years in and out of hospitals and underwent dozens of spinal surgeries. So sad. And she still struggles with pain and bladder infections. And has had to use a catheter to go to the bathroom since she was five. God, poor thing. I know. It's terrible. And at first, Angie had reservations about letting Leah participate in the show. Um, She had to leave her family in Texas to go to L.A. with Leah and said that she actually had to shut down her daycare that she owned and operated. So sacrificing a lot to get on JoJo's OMG, XOMG pop show. But they Um, said it was like really worth it for them because... Yeah, I mean, like uh, her husband Cody talks about how it was such a good opportunity like it was too good to pass up Mm -hmm. and obviously like cody says in his own words quote a person with spina bifida shouldn't be able to do these things that she's doing we never know from day to day if this may be her last time to step on stage we have to take every opportunity we can so i get i totally get get that yeah so in the spring of 2021 angie and leah made the move to la to appear on the show and then for the next two years leah lived the nightmare she never dreamed of they alleged that jess was openly cruel and called the girls names Both Jojo and Jess subjected the children to grueling rehearsals, sometimes making them skip school, and they were barely paid. So according to Angie and a company of the recording uh, contract, the girls were promised $10,000 before recording their first album, but Angie said they only received a little more than $4,000 because Jess said she had to pay for an Airbnb for them to stay in, and a deposit was $42.50 was provided to Rolling Stone to prove it. This is giving Backstreet Boys an sync. Mm-hmm. remember everything they went through and- yeah why would but why would angie have to pay for the airbnb angie says that you have to understand the atmosphere you can't speak up or question anything in fear of your child losing their job or threats of having a lawyer sicked on you and none of them had the money to fight a lawyer with the CWAS. obviously they've these got people are zillions of dollars loaded yeah and obviously like you know a lot of these people were just living normal lives before this i mean she yeah. had a daycare and 
It's not like they had tons of money. And Angie alleges that the mothers were low on money at the time. She says that at one point, her and Bella's mom started working directly for Jess, organizing JoJo's closet and scrubbing toilets for 20 bucks an hour. That is so bad. Why would you have them do that? Yeah, that's crazy. PayPal receipts and schedules were provided to the Rolling Stone for verification on this, by the way. God, that is fucked up. Rehearsals would last for hours on end. Um, For example, they shot the music video, Disco Believer, and they would be working for up to nine hours. These are kids. Rehearsal calls would sometimes be sent to the girls well after midnight the night before. And even though the schedule wasn't unusual, according to the uh, California labor law, nine hours is the maximum amount of time a nine to 16 year old in entertainment industry can spend working on site while school is in session. And like we said, the kids would miss it, frequently miss school. Like they claim that they were behind on school and all that, Mm -hmm. but the teachers on set actually denied this and said that during their tenure, um, none of the parents complained about the girls being overworked or falling behind in school. Well, maybe they didn't want to complain complain because they would worry. They're worried it's going to jeopardize their children accomplishing their dreams here. Right. Or like get them kicked off. Or their dream. Allegedly, Leah was forced to work while being in pain and just encouraged Ugh. Leah to be at a video shoot just a few weeks after undergoing spinal cord surgery. Oh, my God. It's so sad. Dude, this is terrible. I know. In one specific instance, just days before Leah's surgery, she started bleeding through her belly button oh. during a rehearsal for a performance at the Children's and Family Emmys hosted by JoJo. And instead of just encouraging Leah to rest, she allegedly told Leah to put a maxi pad on it. So blood wouldn't get on her costume. Because that's the real concern, right? You don't want Mm. blood on the costume. Apparently, JoJo's online persona was a sharp contrast from how she was in real life, is what many of them are saying, that she could be nasty and intimidating and would scream insults at the girls during performances, really taking a page out of Abby Lee Miller's book. Yeah, which is so sad because she literally went through that. Yep, and has been so open about it. And she played favorites with them, which... Also, as a Abby Lee Miller move, totally to pit them against each other. Another move. Mm-hmm. Dude, remember yep. the pyramid? Oh yeah, on the bottom, top, bottom. God, that was. So we fun. always joke that we're going to start a pyramid <laughs> at work. <laughs> on awesome. the bottom, Charlie. Angie recalls during a performance at the Mall of America, Jojo was screaming into the girls' headsets, "You're sucking! Bring it up! The energy is low. You look sloppy. This isn't good enough." That's literally. Oh my god, Abby Lee Miller. Yep. Well, she learned it from somewhere. I was going to say the best. The best in this yeah. type of... Right, right, right. No, yeah. I, I, we know what you're saying. Mm-hmm. So some of the contracted TV and music done with XOMG Pop falls under the Coogan Law. Now, the Coogan Law we've talked about on the show before. Yes, we have. Um, Angie alleges that a lot of the social media work that they did was unpaid. However, the Coogan Law hasn't evolved with the times and doesn't cover social media work. Which is which crazy. we really need a revamp on that law. Yeah. Um, we, we've talked about this at length before on the show, but the Coogan Law is the California Child Actors Bill, also known as the Coogan Law. It is a child protection law that requires a percentage of the earnings to be placed into a trust that then they can't access until they're 18. And the law was named after child actor Jackie Coogan in 1920s because he became the first child actor to make millions of dollars. And by the time he was an adult, as you can imagine... His parents had spent almost all of his earnings. Absolutely terrible. And this led to a legal battle in 1939, which resulted in the California's Child Actor Bill. And in addition to setting aside 15% of the child's earnings, um, there are requirements for schooling and limited working hours. It's it's just pretty basic protections that should have been in place from the beginning. But yeah, it needs a serious, serious update in 2024. Things have changed a lot Mm -hmm. since this went into... Yeah, I'm. Sh- I'm honestly effect. shocked that they haven't. Oh, we're this. so behind. It's it's actually crazy. We're starting to see some momentum there, but not enough. Yeah. It's taking forever. Anyway, so Jess had rented a house in San Fernando Valley in 2022 that was going to become the XOMG Pop Content House. Gotta have a content house. Why house, would you have a nine year olds living there it's though? So whack. I think that the parents would obviously be living there with them though. Like Still. it wouldn't just be like all the kids like. Having free range, but it's still whack, in my opinion. Just like 24 hour access to these girls to use them as content horses. That's what it really is. And apparently, it was going to be decorated, as you can imagine, bright colored walls and even a claw machine. Woo! Love a good claw machine. Mm -hmm. However, sources close to the group said none of the girls actually stayed there. So that's good. 
Angie alleges that she and Leah spent several months sleeping on a blow-up mattress on the floor of Kinley's dance studio. And Angie didn't advocate for her daughter in fear of repercussions. Exactly. Yep. She didn't want to endanger Leah's position in the group right. or be sued for breach of contract. Mm -hmm. And sources close to the production allege the moms were threatened with lawsuits on multiple occasions. In the fall of 2022, one member, Kaya, um, was abruptly fired. And this just proved that no one's spot with XOMG Pop was guaranteed. Anyone's replaceable. Mm -hmm. Kaya's mom declined to give a comment to the Rolling Stone about their experience. And Leah didn't leave XOMG. God, that's annoying to say. <laughs> I'm just going to say the group on her own accord. On May 3rd, 2023, Angie had a verbal confrontation with the other mothers as well as the teacher after the girls were filming a YouTube video. Jess caught wind of this and texted her demanding that she apologize to the other mothers for her behavior. The text read, um, Angie, I'm really tired of it. I work really hard. I've gone over, above, and beyond for you and your kid. There's food at the house. They're not overworked. <laughs> There's food at the house. I'm feeding them. If you're going to work for me, you cannot act like an asshole. End of story. <laughs> okay. Wow. Then on the 6th, Jessa Lynn fired Leah over text saying, we have decided that we will not be continuing to invest in Leah and she is released from the group effective immediately. Obviously, Leah, the child, was devastated, but her image was still being used in merchandise, of course, Bro. for XOMG exclamation pop. So they followed in the steps of JoJo Siwa, of course, and did a shit ton of merch because yep. obviously they learned that works quite well. Sure does. A merchandising contract provided to Rolling Stone signed in June of 2021 entitles that seven members of the XMG Pop to 20% <laughs> of merchandising revenue or about 2.8% per member, which isn't that much in my no, opinion. No, not at all. Per member, that's not that much. That's crazy low. No, that's I mean, I guess, I mean, obviously, like, they wouldn't be on this merch if it weren't for JoJo, but JoJo, but still. Actually, an entertainment lawyer said that the percentage was shockingly, shockingly low even for new artists, so... Yeah, that's crazy low. Since Leah left, actually two more girls have left the group, Kinley and Bella. And we've mentioned it in the past, but only two states have child labor laws for content creators, California and Illinois. Um, so, I don't know. Morning Consult actually conducted a poll and it revealed that 57% of Gen Z said they'd like to be an influencer if given the chance. I'm surprised it's not higher. I bet it would be. This is just off of one poll. Yeah, I bet it actually is higher. I bet it's way higher. This was in 2019, Ugh, so, so I'm sure the chances are much, much higher now. Well, I mean, yeah. at the same time, though, didn't we all at some point in our childhood have the dream to be like a pop star, to be Britney Spears or some type of like, Remember, the, like fantasy of being famous and a star? Remember on the radio, they would run ads like, are you? Yes. Do you have what it takes to be on Disney oh. Channel? Like, have your mom call up. And I was like, play. Dude, my dad brought us to I, the Radio the Disney Kids Expert Expo. Not He thought it was just like a fun convention. Yeah. Which I think it, for the most part it was, but I was like under the impression I was auditioning for right, something. Right, right, and I was right. real disappointed when he was like, you ain't auditioning for shit. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> the next Hannah Montana. <laughs> I know? wanted to be in a, there was some group, like Triple Image. They Wait, were my shit. You remember Play? That, that was like oh, a big... Oh, I loved Play. Yes. yes. Play. It was like... No. Oh, my gosh. They um, were like... Oh, what was that one song? Girl, you always know that I'll be here for you. you. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Us if against the world. Us against yeah. the world, yeah. Us against the world. There was some guy I started oh my to God. see. Oh, my God. This back. <laughs> Dude, yes. I used to I wanted to be one of them. He can have it. <laughs> I clearly could have been in one of these bands. <laughs> you could have been. Wait, oh my god! I wanted really. to be. This was literally my dream in life, dude. Yeah, kind of sad. So it never it's like, like I kind of understand that. It's like concerning for sure that cause, because it's more attainable now to be actually to anyone can just make content on their phone. So True. that's where the real concern is. Actually, yeah, I guess yeah. No, but yeah, it's me. like the same as it was. Right, right, like right. every kid has like. Or, you know, for some people, it's like being a pro athlete or some type right. of fame and notoriety. I totally. think everyone goes through a phase where you want that, right? right it's right, pretty right. normal. Yeah. No, I agree. Which this is kind of a random side note. Well, it's not random, but a side note. On January 30th, the California Senate passed Senate Bill 764, Child Content Creators Rights Act. And it intends to ensure content creators under 18 earn fair financial benefits from the use of their image. So I'm glad that some states are starting to... Yeah. have this i mean california definitely needs it i have never heard of like a boy band girl band pop group whatever it is 
actually being fair to the members. It seems like they yeah. always get screwed yeah. in every mm-hmm. circumstance that I've ever heard of. Yeah. It's never a good thing. Someone older is taking advantage of them. Well, yeah, this bill specifically is here to protect kids against their parents taking advantage of them. The bill yeah. requires that any adult um, creator that features minors in 30% or more of their own content over a 30 day period uh, needs to set aside an appropriate percentage of their earnings into a trust. So, I mean, it's a start. But yeah, this is crazy. And I, I wonder what's going to happen with, you know, as more, because this is just one example, but I'm sure there's so many. Like, remember how James Charles had that, like, next influencer oh, or whatever yeah. show? Yep. I do remember that. Um, I never watched it. Neither did I. I feel like this will, you know, only continue to come out as more and more shows like this happen. And as more and more people, like, decide that they were totally mistreated. And, I mean, obviously, it's all alleged. But if mm. this is true, that's really, really disappointing. Because, like we said, Jodo went through a ton of mm-hmm. scrutiny and mistreatment from being on dance moms yeah and like, already even, has so much money well like it's just sad like she was even ma- and i'm not saying it it was sad she was made fun of because like abby would make fun of the way she talked or like she yeah, really put her down yeah because you know she had like a just a small i think a speech thing but yeah abby mm-hmm. was awful to her and like and god the thing is that she would doing the same thing and i just yeah, yeah abby's sad. an evil human yeah she yeah, she's not a good person. Wow. I wonder how much of that was like played up for the cameras, though. I don't. I feel like not that much. Because she went stuff. to jail too yeah, for like oh, fraud. Yeah, oh, fraud. I forgot about that for fraud. Yeah, yeah, mm. for like embezzlement or something. Ah, yeah. sounds also, about right. Uh, side note. Okay, as of September 2021, um, JoJo sold more than 80 million bows. Um, <gasps> update double. Yeah, and she's made at least four hundred million dollars from bow sales alone. Bro. Oh my! Oh, that is disgusting. Yeah. Oh my oh, god! My. Wow. That is insane. From fucking bows. Why am I not seeing these bows on every kid around here? I am so confused. <laughs> Who is wearing these bows? Pulling on Holly. Never. <laughs> no, no, no. Not a JoJo bow. Not a JoJo. My daughter's bow. not a JoJo girl. I knew what you were about to say. I know. But then I was like, never Can't mind. call your daughter that. No. <laughs> it just does come to my head, though. It's fun to right, say. Right. It is fun to say. Yeah, yeah, that is that is wild. Yep. Really disappointed God. in her. But I don't know. I never, like, knew much about her, so I didn't, like, have high expectations or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From what I have seen, not super impressed. I wonder what's going to happen with all of this. Her lawyers have adamantly denied everything, obviously. Of course. Of course. Um, and they declined to talk to Rolling Stones. Mm. Like, they, they're they just, like, sweeping under the, under the rug. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I wonder if, like, a lawsuit or something is going to come out of this. Mm-hmm. Like, from, oh, I'm sure. from Leah's side. I bet. Yeah. Or well, well, they could sue them. I yeah, hope those they kids could get them. therapy. Yeah. Defamation. Defamation, yeah. And they'd probably win. Yeah, that's the win. sad reality. Because they have so much money, they can mm-hmm. probably sue them for whatever they wanted. They got bow money, dude. <laughs> Dude, Bo Money's not a joke. Oh, mm-mm. Mm-mm. Jesus. Oh, I feel bad for those is, kids. I hope they all get therapy and it should know, be paid for yeah. by JoJo. The business of bows is really lucrative. Apparently. Maybe we should do a Which sesh makes sense. Bow. It takes nothing <laughs> to finish the bow. bow. <laughs> and I was like, wait. <laughs> wait a second. Now I actually think I actually never scratched that. I love bows. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> Gotta get in the bow biz. But yeah, I would assume you could make hella money because it probably costs like nothing. It's like yeah, a piece yeah. of fabric scrunched up. Yeah. The, a piece of elastic attached to it mm-hmm. with Jojo's face on it. It probably mm. cost them less than a dollar to make, and she's selling those bitches for what, for like 15 bucks? Oh, it gives totally. me trauma from my palms days. I need to wear oh, big, same. obnoxious bows. I thought it was cool at the time. What are palms? Like dance with pom poms. I used oh. to be on a palms team. You used to like put your like hair, I think yours is similar, but at the very, very top in the bow yeah. had to face forward. We had to wear bumpets too. Oh, like big oh my plastic God. things. I forgot about bumpets. So awful doing your hair for it Dude. like would hurt so bad. Bump it. Yeah, I got my fair share of the dance moms experience. I was gonna. I was some gonna the moms ask on my. You. Oh my God. There's I'll, some whack moms on our team. Not. I mean, you would have thought they were on the team with right, their right, right, acting. Right. <laughs> Dude. So insane, and still not a fraction of what these wackos do. It's just sad. So many parents do that to their kids. Like, there's parents who live vicariously with their kids who are in sports. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, through any act, it's just like it's not that serious. Kendall, did you do you ever see now like the palms people? They do their hair down and like curled. Really? Yeah, like I've How seen that dance. I 
I don't know, but I don't see a lot of maybe for the younger girls. No more bumpets. <laughs> no more bumpets. Yeah. Well, or like the, bless them. That was so 2006. Those things hurt so bad. Really? Yeah. Because they're not all like everyone's heads like slightly different. So you're like just jamming this piece of plastic. True. And then you have to like put it as tight as mm-hmm. possible and then spray the fuck out of it. Oh, I hated getting my hair done for dance so much. So awful. Who did your hair? Normally other girls on the team or a coach or oh, someone. Because okay. my mom was like not in. She was not a dance mom. No. She'd be like, these other moms are sitting here gluing rhinestones. My mom would be like, in the morning. And my mom's like, peace, I'm going to bed. Yeah. Yeah. God. Yeah. This isn't for money. Mm -hmm. Here's a great example. Yeah, that looks painful. Oh, that looks so awful. Wow. I'll never forget. We had like an hour long lesson on how to apply mascara. What? Dude, it was so dramatic. Hour long lesson. I'll never forget. Like, my coach was like, you got to hold it and then blink. Like, no one can even see. We're so far. We're like 50 feet at least from the judges. Totally. Probably like 100. It was just all dumb. Anyway. Yeah. Wow, wow, okay, wow. Okay, that's wow, enough wow, wow. of JoJo. We use our phones for everything at this point. But did you know that you can use it for some sexy me time? Don't worry, your fantasies are safe with Dipsy. Just don't forget to use your headphones. Dipsy is an app full of hundreds of short, sexy audio stories designed by women for women, and they bring scenarios to life with immersive soundscapes and realistic characters. Discover stories of second chance romances, adventurous vacation flings, and hot and heavy hookups. And there's a growing library of fantasy series with vampires, Greek gods, and fairy smut to explore the bounds of your pleasure. Our new content is released every single week. So in between listening to your favorite stories again and again, there's always something new to explore. And they also have soothing sleep stories and wellness sessions and sexy written stories to read. So if you have not tried out Dipsy, you are missing out. I'm telling you guys, it's a great app. Let Dipsy be your go-to place to spice up your me time, explore your fantasies, relax and unwind, or heat things up with a partner. And for listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash sesh. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash sesh. That's dipsystories.com slash sesh. Breaking news! Hello. I know you don't have to tell me. I already know. I have never looked better. Thank you for agreeing. I purposely, well, first off, I'm at the mile higher set because we're having a guest tomorrow and I just set the whole thing up to have a guest and I don't want to switch it off just to record one little segment on the sesh set. So you're getting it on mile higher and also you're getting it with only the side light because I don't want to use the front light. It's, <laughs> it's too scary right now. I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to put the camera on me. <laughs> Curly's not flipping the camera. Yeah, no. <laughs> we're in the dark today. I was literally about to record with no lights. But I said you could have one light. Um, but anyways, I want to jump on here. Kendall's not um here, but I wanted to quickly give you guys an update about Ruby Frankie, the terrible evil human being who um was charged with child abuse, several counts. Um, she has finally been sentenced, which we've been waiting for this for a while. Um, and so I just feel like I'll go ahead and update you guys. I mean, there isn't a whole lot to say, but she has been sentenced to four counts and each count is between one to 15 years. So the minimum she'll serve is four years. The max she'll serve is 60 years. Um, so huge range there. I guess it just depends on what they finally decide. Uh, she does have 30 days to appeal it, um, which I'm assuming she probably will. Um yeah, and they'll just they'll determine the exact amount of prison time um here soon, but she does have 30 days to appeal it. So honestly, I hope the bitch serves 60 years. Um but I don't know, I highly doubt that'll be the case. I feel like most of the time it's somewhere in between, but we'll see. This is just really great. She says, "Quote, I am humbled and willing to serve a prison sentence for as long as I need. I am committed to unlearning my toxic behavior." That's great. She also apologized for, quote, twisting God's words and distorting his doctrine. That's interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and also her business partner, use that term lightly, Jody Hildebrandt, uh, received the same sentence after the judge told her she, quote, terrorized the children. And Hildebrandt said, I sincerely love these children. One of the reasons I didn't go to trial is I didn't want 
them to relive this. Yeah, it's absolutely horrific. I just feel so bad for these kids. I think they deserve 60 years, don't you? They deserve the maximum sentence because they've literally traumatized all of their kids. And yeah. I mean, I feel like Jody wouldn't stop here. I feel like she would continue her totally her business and I'm sure Frankie would continue her YouTube, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. they definitely deserve like the worst of the worst. I agree. Mm. At one point, I don't know if she says that. I don't know when exactly she said this, but she says while she's sobbing, by the way, she referred to her six children as her little chicks and herself as the mama duck who was consistently waddling them to safety. What does that even mean? Like, you know how mama duck, like little like, baby ducks follow the mom duck? Yeah. I'm like, bro, you are abusing your kids. Yeah. The fuck are you talking about? The state prosecutor compared um, the kids environment similar to um, a concentration camp like setting, which is just insane that these kids were subjected to that. Yeah. Um, for so long. I mean, the oldest one is, I think he's in his, they're in their 20s now. I think it's the boy, probably like in his early, early 20s. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it was, yeah, he's been moved out for a bit now. Yeah. It's just horrific. I feel so bad for these children. No word on um the dad, though. What's his name? I forgot his name. Uh, Kevin Frankie. Yeah. I think it is Kevin. She also said, I can see now over the past four years, I was in a deep undercurrent that led us to danger. I would have never led you to darkness knowingly. I was disoriented that I believed dark was light and right was wrong. I would do anything in this world for you. Who said that? Frankie. This is just sad because I feel like the kids are going to feel guilty. Of yeah. Like she should just shut up. Yeah. Because as kids, like even as horrific as she did them, I think that you know, I wouldn't be surprised if these kids to some degree like feel sad that their mom is gone. Like that's so traumatic that their mom, you know, is in jail now and she's over here sobbing, being like, oh, well, I led you me. wrong. Like I get why she's saying it probably because she wants to look good in front of the judge or whatever. But I'm like, dude, that's just so sad because I feel like you're still manipulating them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Kevin's attorney, um, Randy Kester, told Law and Crime. Um, we trust the judge to sentence them both to one to 15 years for each of the four counts to run consecutively and let, this, and let the Utah State Board of Pardons decide um, if that should be shortened or another or other conditions imposed. So, I mean, he he does want, you know, them to also receive the maximum, yeah. the maximum um, sentence. Mm -hmm. um, Kevin remains focused on the re rehabilitation of the, of the sweet and vulnerable children so that they might return to a, lo to a normal life as soon as possible. The lawyer also added the treatment of the, these children received at the hands of those whom the children had a right to trust was horrific and inhumane, both physically and psychologically. Yeah, that's um, horrific. Yeah. And we said it before, but he's filed for divorce. Yeah. Um, and is hoping to get custody of the kids again. Um, and this is all from his attorney. Yeah, I guess we'll see how much he really ends up getting. Oh, interesting. So um, he's also seeking to have Hilda Brandt pay for the children's recovery. And part and part of the proceeds of her one point or five point one million dollar home, which she has left, which she has listed for sale. Oh, um, and this was just posted. Yeah, five point one million dollar home. Yeah, it's crazy. They were raking in money. Yeah, and this was posted um today. Okay. Okay. Yeah, from New York Post. Hmm. So yeah, we'll see what happens. But we just wanted to update you, and uh, that's it. Maggie, you have anything else to say? Maggie's here today. My I brought all my girls in. Well. Two girls and the boy. She wanted to sit up here and say hi, everybody. It's been a while. Hello, Maggie. All right. That's it, guys. Let's uh, finish up with the show. Digging. Let us know what you guys think of that whole situation. And let us know what you think of the Stingray, Charlotte. Charlotte. And also Jojo Siwa and her $80 million in bows. That's going to be it for us, folks. Yes, ma'am. Thank Hope you all you having a good day. For watching. Always a fun time. It is. And we'll see you on the next session. Until then. <laughs> See, thank God you're here because last week I couldn't get the intro. Outro. Really? I can't even say outro. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I don't it's know what's okay. going on ever. No worries, honey. I you got would you. think I just started podcasting. You would think. I have been on YouTube since you 2011. Would've, you would have thunk. Yeah. But you'd be wrong. 2012. I don't even know what's going on. Okay. We're okay. going to head off now. See That's you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Keep it fresh. Keep it fresh. Bye-bye <laughs> now. Bye-bye. <laughs>